Coming all the way from the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at Irwani for Africa with Niranza. And today I'll be talking about the Petra Kucha on Sintoma. So what Sintoma really is? Sintoma is actually late Latin for the word symptom. But back in the medical days, Sintoma was better known as Pitoma, which carries the same meaning, symptoms of a disease. But for the Greeks, they don't only view Sintoma as disease, they also translated Sintoma as an occurrence or a tragedy. So that's a little bit of a throwback from history. So let's come back to the modern day definition for symptoms. Symptoms usually refer to a doctor's complaint, and sorry, a patient's complaint. So doctors usually take these complaints as their clue for them to diagnose the conditions of the, um, their patients. They use these complaints as their method to diagnose. So, what does symptoms have to do with microbes in action? So, imagine a bacterial invasion occurring in your body systems. One of the things that you regularly see is that the person will get a fever. So, from microbial activities, we can predict and we can actually assume the outcome, the symptoms. And that's how I want to relate how symptoms have to do with uh, microbial activity. So from a case study, I would like every one of you guys to help me try and hack this case. What's happening to this patient and why is it happening to him? So we have this case study on our patient for today, which is, wait for it, <laughs> Papa. Okay, Papa is a 70 year, 70 year old man. He's been working as a taxi driver and for the past 10 years, he's been a chronic smoker. One day he came back coughing and having a fever. After a while, he developed this pain in the chest and every time he started to inhale, it was so hard for him. So what's really happening to Patman? The doctors decided to take his bottom for a lab test and this is what they found. Anyone wants to take a guess what it is? If you're thinking streptococcal pneumonia, you are correct. So this is a very big, this is a very cause, cause of Patman's symptoms. So, if you're looking under a light microscope, you can see the colored photo here. This is what they look like. And if you're going under an electron microscope, you'll get to appreciate the upper cocci structure. So, pneumococcal pneumonia, uh, streptococcal pneumonia, they usually cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Pneumonia refers to the infection of the lung. So, according to the Malaysian Pediatric Association, it was told that in every 20 seconds, a child succumbs to pneumonia. That's just how tragic the facts are. So if they're so dangerous, where are they? Where can we find them? Actually, streptococcal pneumonia, they're so close to you. You cannot imagine. There is a cadaver section of, um, a cadaver section, and if you can appreciate the mouth section, which is better known as oral cavity, that is exactly where you can find streptococcal pneumonia. Dangerous, isn't it? But no, under normal conditions, they're harmless. But when people get low immunity, that's when they turn from asymptomatic to pathogenic, and that's when symptoms start to rise. So, if you've been listening clearly what Fatma has been suffering, headache, fever, pain in the chest, feeling of itachi, these are all the doings of streptococcal pneumonia. But why? What's happening really? What are they doing? So in the case of Fatma, he probably have contracted streptococcal pneumonia from his working environment. Another predisposing factor to his condition would be the fact that he's been a chronic smoker. This is an important factor that could have led him to being infected. And then, what happens when streptococcal pneumonia starts to enter your airway? Upon entry, what your body first do, does is that it's going to try 